Hey, 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 everyone. Good afternoon. It's Eric from African Art Talks with Eric. And today I'm so happy to come your way. It's another Saturday. And I'm so glad that we are all meeting to talk about African art. This is a platform where we educate. This is a platform where we expose. This is a platform where we bring you everything to do with the continent and its creativity. And that is why I'm so happy to bring this person that I'm bringing to you today your way. It's going to be amazing. I told you that the whole month of August would be about female African artists. So whether you are on the continent itself or you are in the diaspora, hey, I'm still going to bring you on this show so that we can showcase the best of Africa. So hang on a minute. I'm going to play the advert again. Go and invite everyone that you want to come and listen to this to join us this afternoon. And then when you join us as well, I would like you to do me a favor. Just type in the comment box, say hello to me, and I'll mention your name. But I hope you're all doing so great. It is fantastic in London. It's about 24 degrees, and I, I can't wait to even step outside after the show. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, so it's Eric. Again, my full name is Eric Amwakwa Bwadu. If you'd like to pronounce it, just use the syllables, use the, um, yes, the alphabet, and you would sound right, Eric Amwakwa Bwadu. So for those of you who've joined us, hello, hello, hello. I can see we've got Joe Arthur. Joe Arthur was the first person that actually made a comment even before I came live. So Joe, hope you're so doing well. And then I've got my good old friend and brother artist, William, Patrick William Dodu. Patrick says, big up brother. Big up to you as well, Patrick. I'm honored that you're here. And then we've got Zlatan Ibn Ewa. Hi, Zlatan. I hope you're doing well as well. And for everybody else who's joined us online, I'm just going to go to Facebook and I'm going to find out who else is live with us so that I can mention name. But the quickest way that I can see you is if you make a comment. So please do make a comment so that I will mention your name right now. So let's see who else is on Facebook. I'm going to go to my page right now and see who else has joined us. Right. So let's see, let's see, let's see. So James Nanake also has joined us and is in the background. James, I hope you're doing so well. And for everyone else on YouTube, hello, hello, hello. This afternoon, the guest that I'm going to bring is somebody that was introduced to me. I've had a look at her work and she's doing amazingly well in Ghana. I've got more people joining. So let's say all the hellos before I bring my guest this afternoon. So Jojo Dasenewa says, Dasenewa says, Jojo. <laughs> so Jojo, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're doing so well. I've also got my good old friend, Jefferson Kelechi of Fanagoro. Hi, Jefferson. I hope you're doing so well. We need to catch up after the show. Everybody else, please say hello, hello, hello. James says that he's doing well. James says, I'm doing good, Mr. Eric. Nice to see you on here. Share this video, let it go far and wide whilst I bring you my guest now. So I'm going to actually read her bio and then we will talk about her art because every piece of hers tells an African story. And that's exactly what I like, the African story, African story. So her name is Edith Akosia Berchi 
and she'll correct me if I haven't pronounced her name really well because I'm very particular about names. But as far as I'm concerned, her name is Edith Akosia Berchi. Okay, Edith is a, a Ghanaian artist who is doing extremely well. Uh, she's, I'll let her explain her type of work that she does, but her type of art is called pyrography, um, squash art. But I'll let her explain better exactly what she does. And she's exhibited around Ghana in a lot of places, uh, Cape Coast Capital Hotel, Capital Hill Hotel, uh, at a Mills Library in Cape Coast, Exim Bank in Accra. And then her last exhibition was with the British Council in Accra. So I want you to make her feel at home when she joins, and I'm going to bring her on now. Uh, right, let's do so, let's do so, let's do so. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, Eric. I'm fine. You can hear me all right, can you? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Good, 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 can good, 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 good. I can hear you. Um, the volume, if you can turn it up a little bit, that would be great. But I can hear you, yes. Okay. Okay. Great. I can hear you perfectly well. Is it better? Is it better? Yes. I'll let the viewers tell us whether they can hear us. So, viewers, if you can hear us, give us a thumbs up. Uh, type in the comment box that you can hear us as well. And then we've got a comment straight away from James. James says, welcome, Akusia. So they are making you feel welcome already. Richard Mensah, my good old artist, says, hello, Eric. Hi, Richard. I hope you're doing well. Richard will catch up after this show as well. So everybody who's joined us, this is Akusia. Akusia, did I get your name right? Yes, you got yeah, it right. It's Betty, is it? Yeah, Betty. Yeah, Betty. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Now, I didn't get a chance to do Edinkra. Bear with me just two minutes. I'm going to just talk about the Edinkra symbols in a minute, and then I'll okay. bring you back so that right. we know right. exactly right. what's going on. So Jojo says that I can see you here, Akusia. So you've got your fans, <laughs> which is really good. And Patrick William Dodi says, great, I can see you as well. So definitely, yes, people can see you. People can hear you, which is great. Okay. So let's go back and do everything at Inkra Symbols, and then I'll bring okay. uh, Edith back. Lovely. So as we usually do on every Saturday, we talk about the Dinkra Symbols, and I am going to show you today what I've got. Now, these symbols date back to the 18th century, uh, 19th century, from 1810 to about 1820, where we had a king called King Nana Jaman, he was a king of German, but his name was King Edinkra. The people of the Bono region know this story really, really well. And he actually started designing these symbols. And I say this every week so that we actually get to know of this story. Because when we know of our African story and we re reiterate it into the system, definitely it becomes something that is engraved in our mindset. So King Nana Kojo Ajman Edinkra is the one that we're talking about. And he carried on this until his firstborn also took over. And he began doing all these and he got artisans from the Ashanti kingdom or the Akan people also doing these things. And these designs have become very, very popular around the world. Now these days you see them everywhere. When you actually want t-shirts, clothing, jewelry, everything, they've got their Dinkra symbol on it. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a picture of how it's actually made. The, this one is particularly for a cloth. They actually cut out these symbols on the back of calabash. You know, when they crack, they, they cut the calabash and dry it, they can actually cut the designs out of the calabash, as you can see on the tap light, top left-hand corner of the screen. And then they actually dip it in the dye or the ink that they want to use, and then they stamp these symbols. Other people also cut the symbol on stamps of trees, and also do the same thing, they stamp it. And as you can see on the right-hand side, you've got a beautiful gentleman wearing the, uh, the Adinkra as a cloth. But not only is it used as a cloth, you can use it on multiple items. People use it on jewelry, T-shirts, you've got rings there, you've got clothing there, you even got, get, got, get them on mugs these days. And it's used all around the world. So it's become very, very, very popular. But the one that I want us to talk about today is the Anansi Intentan. So Anansi Intentan is in the tree language, but in English, it means the spider web. 
spider web. And it actually represents wisdom, the wisdom of man and how you should deal with people in wisdom. The Bible says that above all, you should get wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing. And that is why I want us to note this symbol really well. You can see there's a circle in the middle. You've got spies coming out, but this represents the spider's web. So that is what we've got today in terms of us learning about our Adinkra symbol. And I'll make sure that every single week we talk about a different a different Adinkra symbol because we've got about 146 of them in total. Isn't that amazing? So, hey, let's rush back to Edith. Let's make sure we don't keep her waiting. Edith, great. So it's good to have Hi, you back. I, I just had to do the Adinkra Thank thing. You. Normally, I start with that before I bring my guest on, but I couldn't wait to see you to make sure that you've connected, and that is why I brought you first. But anyway, how are you doing today? Okay. I'm very well, thank, I'm very thank well, you. Thank how are you? you? I, I'm doing well. Uh, for once, it's sunny in London. It's not raining, and therefore, it's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, let's jump straight into the interview. Let's make sure that we don't keep our guest waiting as well. Uh, tell us a bit okay. about yourself. Okay. If we say Edith, who are you as a person? Okay. okay. Edith is a pyrography a artist pyrography. who uses texture to create um, stuff on wood. Yeah. Okay. I use materials to create textures on wood. That wow. And, and that technique is called what? Pyrography, did you say? It is that is the basics that is pyrography but i decided to add something more okay that is why okay. i added the mixed media so you could see different materials you could touch and feel yeah that is amazing that is amazing yeah. so let's take you way back to childhood for instance because we would like to understand what got you into art uh, we okay. know that art is not very common in uh, it is common, but it's not very popular in, in, in Africa, or people don't really patronize it a lot. So what made you go into art? How, how was it like growing up? Well, um, growing up, I love to draw. That is one okay. thing you could just identify when you get close to me. Anything, I want to put it down. I want to color it. I want to create something. Creativity was my thing. So um, I thank my parents because they also realized the talents very early and they helped me to build up on it. So okay. um, right from primary school to junior high school, in fact, I was competing. I know my classmates are here. I was competing with the guys when it comes to technical <laughs> drawing. They couldn't beat me. <laughs> oh, amazing. Yes. Amazing. Um, that, that is really good to hear. Yeah. So that was when I realized I I really love art and okay. I have to go into it deeper. Yeah. 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 So I did yeah. visual art in secondary school. I did right. Porter Girls. Yeah. That's hey, nice. let's give them a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Louis people. <laughs> good, 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 good. Okay, so and and um, did I you have any teacher that inspired you that much to to take it on fully? Because um, sometimes they think art is for those who don't want to do difficult subjects. Yeah, um, I dropped it along the way. Okay. After 2009, I dropped it for seven years. I was doing something right. else. I was into hotel management. So okay. um, it got to a time where I realized I was putting everything in the hotel management thing, but I wasn't satisfied. I... I didn't enjoy it anymore. So True. that was when I decided to go back to my first love and put together some artworks and see how it will go. So from 2016 that I started, here am I today. Yeah. Wow. So you've stuck to it from 2016 till now as a full-time artist. Is that the case? Yes. Yes. But everything Amazing. you are seeing now is just um, a secondary school idea that I'm using okay. creativity to improve. Yeah. Wow, that is great. That is great. With the commitment and everything, I wonder, as you said, your parents were supportive, but did you have other people that you looked up to as well? Well, my teacher, who was in Archbishop Water Girls, um, Mr. Benjamin Ballo, 
he has really been a backbone to me because um, it got to a point in time when I decided to let it go. I decided to forget about it because it wasn't really paying. And yeah, yeah. the people who come around will also discourage you totally. That's true. And That's true. you just pass a comment like, you'll be a wife and a mother and you wouldn't take this anywhere. So why don't you pick up something else? Wow. So, wow. Yeah. I know. I, I, I can identify with that because, you know, growing up in Ghana as well, because I grew up in Ghana, schooled in Ghana as well, you have the same thing. They're like, okay, why don't you go for these traditional professions, being a lawyer, a doctor, yeah. and all that? Why have you chosen art as your, your, your calling or as your profession, not knowing that it's a calling? You know, the other way around <laughs> is that art yeah. is a calling. And if you don't really calling. pursue it, yeah. it, will, it will, I keep saying it will haunt you for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> all right. So you never gave up. Uh, with all these ne negative comments and all that, and you pursued it. Oh, I did. I did give up. I did give up. But um, as I said earlier on, when you you are passion driven, it's a different thing altogether. Mm. Even in your yes. dreams, you will see yourself putting arts together. So uh, sometimes tell me about you leave it. the scene, but you <laughs> you will leave the scene for a while, but you still come back because that is where you you derive your happiness and your strength from so that's true you still come back that's and i true. did come back you did come back and rightly so yeah uh, since you've come back since 2016 i can see that you've grown so much in the artwork i mean last week i spent some time just looking at the process i went to your facebook page and i looked at <laughs> from the beginning <laughs> i think I, I could see as far back as 2017 till now and i'm like okay. wow the work you're producing is amazing i mean the Thank technique you. is so different can you talk us through, I'm going to show a few of your works, obviously, and then okay. you talk us through your technique. Um, okay. Take it as far as you want to. If you don't want to say everything, you can leave some for yourself. But we I, like wouldn't, to... I wouldn't say everything. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Every yeah. artist has got their, their super, you know, key thing that they reserve just for themselves, yeah. the artistic license. Yeah. So um, I'm going to show a bit of what you do and then you can talk us through it because they are amazing. Okay. I mean, look at that. The one on the left-hand side, I think both were done in 2017, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh. Right. Can wow. You... <laughs> <laughs> can you talk us through um, each one of them? Okay, so the first one, the theme for it is Dipo or Bragor in, in the Ghanaian language. But it's puberty right okay. where um, a young woman experiences her first blood. That is her menstrual flow. Right. Yeah. Yes. So that was that was the theme for for the artwork, and it is a tradition in Ghana, although it is diminishing. But they diminishing it is causing yes. a lot of, you know, challenges because now teenage pregnancy is very high. Those times when That's true. you need to go through this puberty, right? You can't get pregnant because it is a disgrace to your family. But now it is fading away and we have taken advantage of it. So this is when mm. the, the young woman in the middle is taken to a riverside and she's being bathed. And yeah. also at, at the riverside, the, there are some rites they do for her you know, for, for mm -hmm. the people in the community to know that she is ripe. That is how we say it. She's ripe for marriage right. because it's, it's when you, you have your flow, that is when you could conceive a baby. That's so after taking her bath from the river, they bring her home and give her some eto to eat and boiled egg. And it was a myth to ask okay. that if she chews the egg, she has yes. chewed her womb. It was a myth. <laughs> but if she swallows <laughs> it, <laughs> her womb... Then she preserves so her womb. Is, yeah, that is actually um, the perception behind that work. And it's on wood. They are standing on beach sand. You could see beads there. And I used human hair for the hair. Oh, wow. So that you could feel, yes, you could feel. And as you can see, the lady in the middle, you could see the kente. You know, it is our rich culture, and Kinte is what we we use. Yeah. We use, yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. So that is a powerful piece. And mm -hmm. as you said, did you say that the pyrography involves you burning the actual wood to depict yes. the lines? Yes. Every every line you are seeing is bent. Okay. I do soldering iron, okay. yeah, to bend the wood before I put together the textures on it. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. So I can, I can believe that precision of getting the lines correct is very important because once you bend the wrong line, that's it, you've had it. Yes, yes, it is, it is gone. You need to <laughs> do a new wow. one altogether. Yeah. That is amazing. So it really needs okay. time and effort to put together yes, a piece I can like imagine. That. I can imagine. Yeah. And then on the right-hand side, um, what is the story behind it? Oh, it is just the beauty of an African woman. That's it. You could see the African print at the head there. As you can see, I'm wearing an African print. We are getting Definitely. used to let, let me show <laughs> the audience. Our print and putting together something <laughs> else. So I'm just depicting yeah. our originality. That Definitely. is just the reason behind that. Yeah. So viewers, as she says, she's wearing the African print, as you can see now. <laughs> and in the artwork as well, she's got the African print represented because we want to showcase African art, our culture, our fashion everything so is it the real did you is it the real cloth that you've actually put on there yes it's a real cloth and the okay. necklace is real bead you can hold wow it. yeah so it's got a 3d kind of feel to it if you rotate it you can see the 3d yeah. effect that's amazing yes. yeah that's amazing great okay so we're going to show the second piece of work okay which is these two i hope my favorite comes <laughs> <laughs> Let us know when oh. it gets to that turn. Okay. So right. the first the first one is um music for the soul. And it is just portraying how we have as Africans we have lost our, our touch of music to the foreign land. That is why you can see their um appearance in, in jackets and pants, but there's True. a touch there's a touch of African print. And yes. it's just a proof that the, the, the African originality of music is fading away. That's true. That is true. Yes. So majority and of the dressing the and the instrument. Yeah. Yeah. The instrument Western. they are using is not what the African man would use. We, we use xylophones and we use um, empty cans to create sounds, but it's no more. So that is just it. And with that artwork, I use eggshells. So all their jackets is in eggshells. Oh, wow. Natural eggshell, not painted. I just chose wow. different colors to make it depict that form. And you could see um, plantain back. I use the, the trunk of a plantain. Yeah. Okay. For, yeah, for that work. For that instrument. And some beads. Yeah, some beads. Mm. Amazing. This is proper mixed media. <laughs> and, and the message has been communicated really well as well in here. Yeah, the next, the next one, the theme for it is give and leave. Okay. Yeah, give and leave. And um, it is just, you could see they've joined their hands together. So it depicts married couple who are That's lifting right. up everything they have had or they have worked for in life to, to God. You could see the dove, okay. you could see the hands depicting God. Yes. So yes. if you give what you have, you live. If you give, you live. If you don't give, you die. You die. So and I like the yeah. way that they've drawn their hands at the middle. You know, they, they are doing this in unity as well. You said I couldn't hear you. I like the way they've joined their hands at the middle. Uh, it shows the unity between them, even as they lift everything of theirs up to God. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. We'll take a few comments from the audience. Um, we've got Sharon. Okay. So Sharon Ankara says, nice. I know Sharon, Sharon is one of your mates, is it? And then we've got Graciela Blackstone from Maryland, USA. Uh, says, greetings from Maryland in the US. Wonderful guest, Eric. Eric. And then we've got Samuel Boahen, who says, great. And Samuel says that welcome, Akusia. You're looking great. Good vibes. <laughs> and then Manasseh Asidu says powerful. That's my pastor. 
Oh, amazing. Amazing. Thank you for supporting that, Pastor. And then we've got a good friend of mine, Bennett Kweku, who says, very insightful. Thanks, Bennett. Oh. And then Joel Amoadu says, great artwork from you, Akosuya. So keep the comments coming to encourage Akosuya in her, on her journey. Uh, we'll carry on with the interview. <laughs> keep the comments coming. Right. So I'm going to okay. show the next artwork, and then we'll talk about something else. Great. Okay. So this, these two pieces, I sense they are biblical. Uh, in its context. Is that the case? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the what was the one, first story? Yes. With the, with the first one, I had a great time when I exhibited it because a lot of people were given different ideas about it. People said um, being broken from slavery and right. other stuff, but the theme for that work is knowledge is power. Amazing. Yeah, you could see so that, that brings it to light because life. I can see the, the, the gentleman in the, you're holding a book, isn't it? Yes, a book and a light, and the chain's broken. That's it. Yes, because what you Amazing. don't know can kill you. So knowledge exactly. is power. Exactly. <laughs> what you don't know can kill you. I used to be I used beads and metal chippings, yeah, for, for it. So tell us a bit more about the technique, because I know it's quite uh, labor intensive, putting together mm -hmm. every bead at a time. I mean, do you have that patience for it? <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I don't have an option. <laughs> As I said earlier on, you know, if you are vision driven. Yes you would do everything to see yourself there. That's and right. One thing about the beads, putting together the beads, was that I could just, I could have used another technique to just pour it True. on the board. But I wanted yes. texture and consistency. Okay. So I need to pick it one after each other and arrange wow. on the board. Yes. Each single bead, small bead, yes. <laughs> just yes. being put there. <laughs> that's that's the beauty of art and and yeah. the uh, the creative process, whereby you actually put your soul into every single piece that you yeah. do. Yeah. So viewers, I would encourage all of you to appreciate her because she puts so much into it, so much time, so much uh, creativity. Every single piece is custom, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Right. Let's keep st telling the story. I'll move on to the other piece. Uh, so we're talking about the one on the left. What about the run, one on the right-hand side? The one on the right, the theme is thoughtful reflections. Okay. It is, it is what you give that is given to you. And mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really relate to only couple, but also children. When you, you give them love, they will give you in return. When you give them discipline... It is, it is what you give, that is what you see. So if yes. you've, given, you, you've not given time and effort, if you've not given hard work, don't... Expect to receive, basically. Yes don't, yes, don't wait to receive, you know, success because you've not put in, in any effort. So it mm. is what you put in somebody, that is what you receive. If you want love, you give. If you want care, you give. What you haven't given, you can't receive. So that is, that is, that very is true. The, that's the, that is very true. Yeah. So I, I know you like a lot of quotes. Um, let's look at this one. You said, learn the rules like a pro so that you can break them like an artist. <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, learn the rules like a pro and then you break them like an artist. Well, I, I feel in life, everything is, is with a rule. Everything comes with rules and boundaries. You can't cut corners okay. to get results. So if okay. you are really in, um, inspired by somebody, you really yeah. need to move along with a person, steady, and also challenge yourself with what the person did so you could also get the same results. You can't cut corners and receive the same thing. So you learn like a pro. And you know how okay. artists are. Uh, we break all rules. Very wide. So <laughs> <laughs> we break all the rules. So I, I now understand what you meant by it. Rule. 
every rule we break it so let's flip the coin it, it, it means you don't really just um take the liberty to just be you know on this cuckoo land just doing your own thing you exist among normal people so learn the rules of the game yes but when yes. you've learned it then just bring in your own stuff and bring in your creativity take yeah. it to another level mm -hmm. that is it's a great like quote that's a great quote you know, an exam, yes. they will just give you a story and they will tell you to to summarize it, how you understand it. So yes. you need to first read the story before That's you it. could add what you want to add to it. To and expand upon it. Summary. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So uh, will you term yourself as somebody who likes breaking rules? <laughs> oh, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Eric, you okay. know. You are an artist. But that's why you're you know. an artist. That you is why you're an artist. You need Definitely. to break rules. You, you have to. to. Break you rules. have to. Yes. Yes. And I think People there's some um, level of around one a.m. Yeah. two a.m. Yeah. And that is when you are getting your inspiration. You need to break your exactly. back. Exactly. Yes. You need to put together all the money you've got and yes. sleep in an empty stomach. Yes. So you you break every rule just to be there. That is well true. That is well true. And I think there's some level of freedom that comes with it when you've broken a rule but yet you've achieved something really great yes. out of it yes so this yes. is to encourage all young artists it's not every time that you have to follow every single rule to the death now know the rules but know that you have artistic freedom to create and, and come up with your own thing and there's yes. no one way of, of doing art i keep telling my my kids that you know every mistake in art is a new style you don't have yes. to there's no mistake in art actually yeah yeah <laughs> There's no mistake in art. Great. Let me say um, hello to a few other people. So Victor says lovely pictures. And Moses says hello. So we've got, oh, Joel. OK, Joel says, Akosia, you really have a story to tell. And overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed with this artwork. That's amazing. That's great. And then Moses is giving you a hi as well. Moses, thanks for joining us. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's show more of the artwork because of time, because I want us to exhaust the pieces that I, I chose for this. Uh, I, I didn't leave out anyone because all of them are beautiful and I like the story behind them, um, especially the one on this left-hand side, for instance. Oh, finally, my favorite came. <laughs> it's my favorite as well. <laughs> oh. Okay, so... The theme for that art is um, Kaiwechi, that is in the tree language, okay. Okay. which means um, remember where you are coming from. Right. You know, when when you come to our current situations now, you can trace that um, a farmer has a doctor or a lawyer in their families, and it wasn't True. so years ago because. So at that time when you are growing up and your father is having a cocoa farm, you naturally psych your mind that you are also going to farm because it will be handed over That's to true. you. But yes. now it is not like that. So, mm -hmm. Kaiweti, remember where you are coming from so that you put seriousness in everything that you do to appreciate our mothers, the stress they went through. She's carrying a baby at her back with a load on yes. her head with her kids, barefooted. That's and true. At these times, too, it's either the, the the sun is really scorchy or it is raining. But she needs mm. to bring it home because without the firewood, they can't cook. Wow. Yes. So that is a powerful story. Yeah. So that's that's what made me put together this art piece. And let me say a small story about the firewood they are carrying. So um, I was around one day when I heard two women having a conversation about firewood. And one okay. was like, oh, um, ekutu, ekutu, that's orange tree. If you orange tree, yes. Firewood, even if it's not fully dried, it lights up very fast. Hmm. If they have, you know, orange branches in it, orange tree branches in yeah. it. And, yes. and that's, that's, alone you know caught my attention to it i was like okay let me just get some and also experience it and see and it worked so the the firewood you are seeing there they are real firewood and i used um orange branches oh wow so you can remove them put it back you can light them yeah 
So it's amazing that in your pieces, you know, not only do you create the thing, but you use the actual object to create the art. Yes, yes. That's amazing. That is amazing. I mean, I, I, the funny side of this story that you've told, or the more serious side of it, is that I can't see the dad as part of this picture. And that's something that, you know, normally happens in, in, in our part of the world where sometimes you see the mothers carrying all these loads with the baby at the back, and yeah. then the dad is just holding a cutlass following them. <laughs> you know? Yes. And that's not something we should encourage. I think the men should also be a part of this story. We should help our wives in whatever chore. So in modern days where there are other chores, African men, we should play a role and also help in the household. Yeah. There's, there's no excuse these days. So no I think excuse. you've depicted the artwork really well. Um, yeah. I would have loved to see the man in, in somewhere, but oh, hey, it's I your story. I took the men out. I intentionally took <laughs> Come on. You can't just take at least at least you'll be part of it just holding a cutlass following. But that's that's anyway. That's just by the way. Because you wouldn't you wouldn't carry any load, so you don't need to be there. Hold your cutlass and be at the back somewhere. You're right. You're right. So the the, the, the view of the artist didn't even catch him because he was trailing behind yeah that, that is amazing right so there's a question from uh one of the viewers barnett and barnett is saying what is the theme for the one with the two love birds in the umbrella <laughs> oh okay <laughs> the theme is stay with me okay stay with me is a the theme yeah stay with me. amazing and as you can see amazing. they are showing their back to us so forgetting That's everything right. that the world is saying and focusing mm -hmm. on what they share with each other. So stay with me. That, we are not, we are not even looking at the world. <laughs> to listen to what that they are saying. We are giving them our back. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I use excels and, for mm -hmm. the ladies' dress and the guys' jacket. So let's and, let's look at it again. Excels yeah. for the ladies' dress and the yes, guys' jacket. And the guys' jacket. Yeah. And his pants you have beads there and the okay. shoes beads and the umbrella beads very colorful beads for the umbrella that is very colorful but that is beautiful as well because it makes the whole thing pop out which is really yeah. good yeah and i like the combination of the red and the yellow beads um it's cut it and it creates a whole lot of you know the mosaic has come out very beautifully by using those combinations yeah yeah thank you <laughs> So what really what really inspires you to create all these stories? Do you get them from let's say things that you see around you or movies that you've seen? What really makes you create these beautiful stories? Okay. Um what influences my artworks are the environment I find myself in, the traditions that go on every day, and also our everyday life. Sometimes I'll okay. just be going somewhere and I'll see something and I'll, I'll stand there for a while, depict it in my head, and we are good to go. All yeah. right. Wow. So ideas just pop and, and you, you capture it straight away. That's amazing. Yeah, ideas. And sometimes arts I have seen before, I just yes. add my touch to it to make it different and unique. And you make it unique. Yeah. You make it unique. That's amazing. There's a, 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 a very good question from Joel. Joel says, Akosia, <laughs> she studied hospitality management back in school. Eric, please ask Akosia when she discovered this great talent. I miss your beans to you, though. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think we answered this question earlier, but repeat it for um, Joel's benefit. <laughs> She'd like to know when you discovered the talent, uh, because she he still misses your beads and uh, beats you. <laughs> okay, so Joel, this talent has been there since secondary school, but I just wanted to try my hands on something new. That is why mm. I came to school to read hospitality management, just to That's add right. to what I have. Yeah, and I think there's a bit of um artistic uh, license in in food creation of food as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. With all the colors of the, you know, the, the um, ingredients. The garnishing, the garnishing yeah. and everything is art. That's it. Yeah. So, yes, she didn't leave creativity, went into hospitality. But, and I hope you haven't even stopped with whatever you're creating when it comes to food. It's still there. Uh, it's still you're there. creating 
yeah, P, art pieces alongside. So you it's will, all forms test, of art. You will test my beans to you when you come to Ghana. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Why not? <laughs> it's been recommended. So, right. These pieces, um, it's quite different from the previous ones. That's why I reserved it for the last part. Oh, okay. This is yes. a solely do dead work. That's right. And the first one took me about a month to finish. Oh, wow. Yeah. Everything so it, that is time consuming, all... isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And what, what is the theme? Is it the, it's got a lot of Egyptians, uh, kind of Afro theme to it? I chose I chose the Egyptian pharaoh for the the picture, but the theme is authority. Authority, okay. Theme for the authority, yes. And when we talk about authority, we are talking about a man being the head of the family. Even the Bible says it that the man is yeah. the head of the family. So your line was breaking up a little bit. Ahead. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so so it's, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go into details. No. I wouldn't go into no. details when it comes to that work because it's it's one of my great pieces. Yeah. It's amazing. It's an amazing piece, and I think the so message is very clear. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So yeah. viewers, if you want to know more about this special piece, um, I'll be showing her social media handles <laughs> so that you contact her and you get one of these pieces. If you're interested in any other piece or you have a custom piece as well, uh, I'll let you know. I'll let you know her social media handles so that you speak to her back door and get your custom piece made as well. And then the one on the right hand side. Oh, the one on the right, the theme is religion. Religion, I wanted right. to do something that will cut across, you know, everywhere. It's a Muslim mm -hmm. woman, you know cut with her hajib showing her decency as a woman that's right so that that is that is actually it very beautiful that's you could amazing. see very beautiful woman it's a very everything. beautiful woman yes, yes. very well yes. captured yes very well captured and i know that you have other styles as well and um, these three that are chosen depicts the different the dynamics of your, your work you don't just use the scorching which is the pyrographic technique. Yeah. But you have these beads and clothing and anything you can lay your hands on, I think. Yeah, anything I could lay my hands on that has a longer lifespan. Mm. Yes. Mm. Because I don't want my clients coming back to me and giving me stories. Your, your artwork doesn't last long and all that. So I really look for materials that have a longer lifespan. To put That's them right. together and the one you showed is just a, a project i'm still doing I'm, I'm i'm putting together something to hold an exhibition and it's all about line drawing in abstract so all right it's a line drawing but it would depict what it's, it's talking about yeah yes let me show it again so line drawings but you can see through uh the first one is it two people there i think it's a lady and a gentleman dancing is it yeah yeah so now that I've described with viewers, can you can you make it out now? <laughs> it took me some time to just figure it out. <laughs> and then the second one is an abstract of is it two ladies? Yes. Or? No, it's an abstract of a man and a woman. And a woman, that's right. Yes. The theme is the two shall be one. The in two shall be one. Body. Yeah. So you've got continuous lines between the two of them, which is amazing. Yeah. And then the third one is a kiss on the neck. <laughs> amazing oh i'm making it out now so initially i could see just one lady <laughs> as, as soon as you mentioned it i can see the other person yeah amazing so yes creativity is within you and you've created things really well you did mention that you opened your gallery in 2016 or you went full-time in 2016 and from then till now so almost four and a half years or five years within the game you've sustained it I mean, I believe you face challenges. Can you tell us some of it? <sighs> a lot. Before before you answer, I'm going to show um, this question or uh, comment from Barnett. Barnett says, yes, until you explained it, I was finding it difficult to identify them except the last one. 
it's amazing, isn't it? What art can do. You can actually hide mysteries between the pieces. <laughs> There's also a comment from Mame Efua Dankwa Pia says, proud of you, sis. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then Moses says, very intellectually packed artwork. Well done. Thank you. So the feedback is amazing. Feedback from viewers. Thank you, viewers, for your comments. Uh, feedback is amazing. But we were talking about challenges as an artist, especially in Africa or Ghana, for instance. What are some yeah. of the challenges that you face? <laughs> I know you're shaking your head. <laughs> you can write a book on that, can't you? When I had my exhibition at British Council, um, mm. at an of library, sorry, when we were having our um, K-Post Festival, anybody who is in Ghana know how K-Post Festival is, is it's a huge you know, kind of festival. So I had yeah. a three-day exhibition, and Eric, would you believe none of my artworks were bought? What? Three days? You get, you get people trooping in. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, who did it? And I'll be like, oh, it's me. I used to wow. draw. Then they will just say, okay, we will see you later. Three days. Oh, they bought nothing. Goodness. And I use all my investments for that. I can imagine. Season. And after three days, I was sleeping in an empty stomach. You have no idea. Wow. <laughs> you, you have no idea. That was when I decided to quit, honestly. I decided mm. to quit first. Mm. Um, I had one backbone who is of blessed memory now. And just a month ago, my mom, who kept pushing me oh dear. and telling me that, you know, you are, you are vision-driven with this artwork. You can't live without it. So That's right. no matter what you are experiencing it is part of the success story so keep going don't give up that is a really a good advice from your mom and um, accept our deepest condolences i know that wherever she is she is looking or smiling down on you because of the yeah. achievement and because you've actually kept the faith and you've yeah. kept it going mm -hmm. but i can identify with the challenges of an artist especially yeah, in that. You'll get people walking to you and they'll be like oh Oh, yeah, oh, uh, this this thing that you are doing for the sake of those who do not understand the tree language that's this right thing that you are doing yes yeah, this thing that you are doing you are wasting your time when you're in ghana they appreciate mm. it outside ghana so find ways and means to leave otherwise you'll be frustrated with it <laughs> but so, i think it's about time that africans start appreciating our work because yeah. you know we understand our story better so um, we will continue producing, we'll continue educating. And that's one of the reasons that I'm doing this as well. It's for those in the diaspora as well as those on the continent to let, expose what we do because sometimes they don't see it and they wait for others to appreciate before they can appreciate it. But we need to start appreciating our own work uh, produced yeah. by ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. Barnett says they are all beautiful. Thank you. And then Henry Osei Janfi says, God is the first creator, then artists continue the creation. That's very, <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> Henry Osei Janfi says, the mind of artists are full of mysteries. That is very true. Full of mysteries. That is very true. Right. So I know you talked about you spent four years in there. And I know that your uh, fourth anniversary was quite a big one. Uh, let's show a few pictures. And you even presented this piece to is he is he a kin or a chief? Um he's a chief. That's a very quick way we see. Amazing. This, this so when the Bible says that your gift when I launched. Oh, this is when you launched it. Yes, this is when I launched okay. it. Okay. So it, it was launched on a very big scale. I mean, having the chief yeah. of the land come to that event. Yeah, yeah. It was. The picture I'm presenting to him was for the regional minister for Central okay. Region, Honorable Richard Hagen. He, he couldn't make it, so I presented it to the king because they are very good friends. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. This confirms where the Bible says that your gifts will bring you before kings. I mean, literally, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then I know that um, you've had challenges in your journey, but still, I mean, one of this is this one, and I'll leave it to all Ghanaians to guess who this person in the picture is. Oh. So, guys, put it in the comment box if you know who this person is. Just type it in the comment box, and then I'll carry on with the conversation. If I don't see any comments, I'm not going to carry on with this interview. Please comment. It's a beautiful piece of artwork. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for the comments. Oh, wow. It's <laughs> okay. beautiful. Anyway, right. So we've had one comment come through. And Henry says, I was also frustrated at all. Keep up the good work. So Henry okay. is supporting you big time, which is really, really, really good. Right. So he also says that the signature is the glasses. Definitely. That gave, that gave the whole game away, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Mami Fua says it's our very own precedent and then Barney says do you okay. discuss with corporate entities or just individuals okay so this is a, a good question from Barnett he says that do you discuss with corporate entities or just individuals I think you need to hold discussions with corporate bodies to buy into your products um, do you okay. have any comments with regard to that well, I did, I did, but the the journey wasn't so smooth, very stressful. Okay. So I decided to deal with individuals. But as he is saying, maybe there's a second chance out there for me, so I need to start with the corporate. Definitely, yeah, definitely. I think, Especially I think, those you know, in the hotel yes. Field, those in, yes, yes, the estate yes. developers. I need to get to them and yeah definitely i think in the area of estate development there's there are a lot of development springing up in ghana and uh, very high class ones as well so definitely i think you should start the yeah. conversation yeah. going definitely mm -hmm. there's also um, a good comment by samuel okay. Anan riverson he says great akosia makes art so easy and beautiful it's a whole package she sings beautifully too oh wow <laughs> oh <laughs> So I'm not going to ask you to sing an a cappella here. I'm not going to put you on the no, spot, no, but I know you sing beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> great, great. Right, so I'll put the picture up here. Uh, we know that it's okay. the current president of Ghana, President yeah. Nana Adodankwa Akufuado. And yeah. can you tell us the story behind these, this piece and how you got to be a part of presenting it to him? Okay, so this happened um, in Cape Coast at the Ridge Royal Hotel when he okay. came to read his manifesto at the, um, um, at the university, yeah, Cape Coast University. So All right. um, I had this piece and I, I wanted to present it to him when I had the exhibition going on at British Council. But at that time, mm. I got to know he was out of the country. So I still, I kept it waiting for when, and I knew with elections, definitely, he will come around. He so would come. When I got to know he was around. I spoke to some people around him, and they gave me the opportunity to give it to him. And he was so impressed. He was. So I impressed. mean, who, who who would it be? That that is a replica of him. Uh, it shows him exactly. Um, how long did it yeah. take you to create such a piece? Oh, two weeks, because of the bees. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The bees takes a lot of time. But no, you've presented it really well, and um, it's come out looking like him, which is a good thing. So you mentioned British Council exhibition. Um, I know that that you had about fifty pieces for that one. Is that the case? Yeah, yeah. Wow, it must have been a lot of work um, putting such an exhibition together. Uh, how did you get yeah. into such an opportunity? Okay, so they sent a link around for young artists who are into something new to apply so okay. that you give them a one week opportunity to exhibit their works so right. i i filled the forms and they gave me three months to prepare so within that okay. three months that is when i put together the 50 artworks to to exhibit yeah that is no mean achievement. I mean, 50, every artist know that to have 50 pieces in three months is, is something else. Um, most of the times you produce about two work a week. If you're a really good artist, you produce just two a week. So to have 50 
in that three months is incredible. And the results show right here. I can see all happy faces, uh, people at the British Council. Uh, who was in attendance? Did you have the ambassador coming as well? No, he was out of town. He was out of town, out okay. Of town. Yes, yes. But it was a one week um, exhibition, so I had people trooping in every day. And that day, that's right. to the glory of God, I made, I made good sales. I did. Yay, that's it. That is the satisfaction of every artist when your work is appreciated, not only appreciated, but also bought. Because at the end of the day, we are making these pieces so that people can own them. So um, I advise people to patronize them. That's amazing. Well done. I'm going to just show a video reel of the day um, at British Council just to capture the essence so okay. that people can feel it. just to provide a space and an opportunity for exceptionally talented artists to be able to showcase their work and um, so we can showcase it to our network and also they can be proud of the work that they've done. Beautiful. That is amazing. I mean, I can feel the buzz in that room already. Tell us a bit about that day and how the whole whole event went. Um, it was it was a very short. In fact, the the opening day was a Friday, so we had okay an awesome moment. Then I I wasn't given enough um time to talk about the work since. It was going yeah. to be there for a week. It was just an opening, and you had uh, I had people coming in, appreciating what they saw, having good time together, eating and taking pictures. That was actually what we right. the first day. <laughs> but, um, along the week, you get people trooping in who really need your attention and time with each yes. of the works, and that oh. made it worth it because I I got to experience how people think about my kind of art and what they wish I could have added to it and what they thought I could have taken out. And it was really yeah. an educational an educational event for me. Yeah. And I appreciate British Council Accra Ghana so much. I am waiting for another opportunity. Definitely. So British Council, if you can hear us, Edith is waiting for the second opportunity to come and exhibit with you. And I know that you can make that happen for her. We need to tell our story to the rest of the world. Um, Ato, Micah, a good friend of mine, is saying, where can he find one of your work in Accra? Oh, Ato, I don't have them in Accra because I'm not in Accra now. I'm in Cape Coast. But um, distance is not a barrier. I have delivery services that could get it to you if you want it amazing so at the end of the show i'm going to display her social media handles so that you can reach out to her and contact her directly um if not just inbox me and i'll make sure that she gets the message as well yeah, sure. so that you can acquire you know her beautiful pieces uh, we have joel who says fellow ghanaians <laughs> that's to do with the president <laughs> of ghana <laughs> that's amazing right so i know you've done all these beautiful works and I also know that you do a lot of work in your community. Um, tell us some of the work that you do. I know you deliver to orphans and, and all that. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. gesture. Um, can you tell us what moved you to do that? Okay, so I believe in giving back to society. Um, whatever I'm using for my works now is just a gift from, from God. Yes. And he gives me the, the, the idea and sometimes the passion and the so it was
So your line is breaking a little bit, if you can hear me. Can you hear me, Edith? Okay, so we've, we're losing Edith here, but I think she will definitely come back. Right, Edith is back. Let's do so. Right. So we lost you at the very last. Uh, you were saying that you were giving back to society and it's something you believe yeah. in. Okay. Okay, we, we can hear you now. Yes. So, right, we lost the last bit of what you said about giving back. Can you repeat that for okay. us? Okay, so it was our fourth anniversary, and we decided to give back to society. So I put together some funds with a team, and we decided to visit an orphanage home and give them stuff and share in our joy. Yeah. That is amazing. That is a really good gesture, and uh, people are appreciating you for that. Uh, Amanda Baffo says such an amazing talent. And we've got Javes who says a liberal soul shall be made fat and he who waters shall be watered. That is a profound comment. Uh, if people want to really get a piece of your artwork, what are your social media handles? Where can they find a piece of your artwork? Let's say on Instagram or Facebook. Hello, Eric. Yes, I can hear you. If people wanted a piece of your Hello. artwork, how yeah. can they contact you? And where can they find more of these pieces? On, let's say Instagram or, or Facebook, okay. for instance. Um, yes, um, Instagram, Akosia underscore DE underscore artist GH. I think we will display it after the video. Definitely. And um, also, I, I I think I could put my mobile number out there, right? Um, I will share so that. We'll just, I think let's do the Instagram together after the show. Definitely, you've got the Philian Gallery as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, I have Philian Gallery there as well. As well, but okay. So uh, people can artists is operating, operating very fast. Yeah. Okay. So. So let me type. Let me edit this yeah. one and type the acoustic. So. What's the handle again? Akusia. Small letters A Q U O. Okay, let's type that again. A Q U O. S U A. S U A. Underscore D E. Underscore D E. D E. Underscore artist G H. They are all in small letters. Okay, let me make sure that I've got it right. Now, does the artist uh, have... Okay, let me display this, and then we'll confirm whether that is the correct one. Is that the correct link? Yes, yes, that is it. Lovely. Okay, so everybody that wants a piece of your work, go to this Instagram account, um, direct message her, and you'll be able to find her. You've also got the yes. Philian Gallery on Facebook as well, isn't it? Yes, but it was, it was hard some time ago, so... Right, so we're not going to use that one. Use, use the, Instagram the Instagram one. Yes, the Instagram one. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And then you see her work. Let's see. Two more comments have come through. Uh, Thomas oh. Yorson says, great interview. Uh, thanks, Thomas. And then Ingrid from Pond says, wow. So thanks, Ingrid. That is amazing. That is amazing. So, Akutia, any last words for up and coming artists uh, to encourage them to take up art? Yeah. Um my last words to up and coming artists is don't give up no matter what great don't give up great. um everything you are seeing me do now was a seed mm. and as i was watering it i was paying attention to it giving it sunlight this is where we are today so do not let somebody talk you off your vision or your dream focus that's right there. yeah 
amazing comments amazing comments thank you so so much for honoring us and um, so us much, being a part of your journey as well thank you and god bless you <laughs> thank you so much eric you're thank welcome you. have an amazing day definitely and you too so viewers that was akosia and her works are so amazing she's multi-talented and if you want a piece of her work that's the instagram account on there make sure that you do definitely contact her so that you can buy her pieces uh, she can ship to any part of the world so make sure that definitely you get in touch and be a part of her journey that is what every artist wants um for those of you who are looking for other interviews that i've done with regards to african artists make sure that you subscribe to my youtube channel when you go there you'd see countless interviews that i have done if you want my youtube address just look at this one it's emab75 or just type in african art talks with eric and you'll find all these interviews coming up so that you'll be a part of the storytelling journey of the african artist so thank you so much for being a part of it and i know that you'll join us next week as i bring you another fantastic artist god bless you god bless you have a great day have a great day <laughs>